thank you very much. Good evening. This week I've obtained a leaked copy of this top secret document. It's from America and it's the Hollywood rule book, okay? Rule one, we did win Vietnam. <laughs> rule two, in fact we've won every war, even ones we weren't in. <laughs> Over the summer I saw a film called U571, okay? It was about this American submarine that captured a German Enigma decoding machine from a U-boat in the war. True story. Except for one tiny detail. The event actually happened in May 1941, seven months before America joined the war. <laughs> now, I admit the Americans did eventually capture a decoding machine, but that was on June the 8th, 1944, just after D-Day. By that point, the Germans were giving them away in car boot sales. <laughs> the trouble is, of course, that Americans learn all their history from movies, not to mention their geography. They think that America is the whole world and that the first American ever to go abroad was Neil Armstrong. <laughs> so, what effect, then, does this have on them? Well, let's ask one. He's an award-winning American comedian, ladies and gentlemen, Rich Hall. Yeah, big gear slapping rubber lay and eat my dust, drink the water, you. There's no need to shout. You're in England now. It's okay, we can. Sorry. Do you have actually the first idea where you are? I do know where I am. I'm in the incredibly shrinking uh, English uh, countryside. I feel sorry for uh, England now because everybody's fucking off from them, you know? It's like uh, Wales, <laughs> Scotland. They're all leave. We don't mind. Pretty soon they're going to be like. <laughs> Look. There you go. Yeah. We can do this, you see. Ah, screw that. That's like the clitoris. All right. <laughs> Like you can't remove England. Oh, you can't? I've left oh. Anglesey, though, but you would... you got a bunch of uh, oars, though, you could uh, move this thing further south where it'd be a little bit warmer. <laughs> you know, that'd be a little nice, but what uh, do you I learn? love England. I am, by the way, less American than you. Explain the logic behind that one. Because uh, I, I'm no big fan of America. Okay, yeah. well, we can get started on that basis. Sure. What did you learn in American geography lessons? What? <laughs> no, oh, so back things. up, back up. You know, see, we don't, I mean, Americans, as a rule, don't really need to know geography, feel they don't need to know geography, because they're, you grow up being told you're the center of the universe. They figure people will come visit them sooner or later. And uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Americans are expected to understand geography or history. I think they, they feel that they just have to protect it. Well, I mean, they do a pretty good job with, with Hollywood, of course, because I've watched a great many Vietnam War movies, and right. in every one, you win all the battles. How did you lose? <laughs> oh, yeah. Those are a lot of Pyrrhic victories, you know. Uh, yeah, we did win a few things there, I think, but it's... No, you, know, you didn't. You lost it all. Uh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Hamburger Hill, wherever that was. We won that one. <laughs> well, knowing you lot, you'd claim you won Agincourt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know how many uh, Vietnam veterans it takes to screw in a light bulb? How many? You don't know? No. Of course you don't, because you weren't there, man! Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I want to get on to the U.S. elections. Oh, boy. Have you, uh, have you <laughs> ever come across one of these? It's a hole punch. Yeah. <laughs> it's a British invention. Yeah. You see, we have an intelligence test in Britain, okay? where we give people a pencil, and if they know which end to use, right. the vote counts. Mm. Don't you think it's a good idea that if you can't punch a hole in a piece of paper, maybe you're too dim to vote? I agree, and that's why we have uh, Bush as our next president. People are going to have to pay. People cannot vote. But you're talking about the state of Florida, which I'm sure many of you have been to, and is the biggest bunch of grifters and drifters and crusty human rodentia that ever walked the face of the earth. <laughs> It's Florida, all right? People are voting for a president for four years. Most of the people in Florida aren't going to be alive in four years. <laughs> and you got two guys, and it's true, 
It's absolutely true. The ballots, one president's name was so high on the list that most of the uh, shriveled up people in Florida couldn't reach it. <laughs> had to vote for the other guy. 20% of the people voted for the Penguin Printing Company for president. <laughs> and, uh, and it's run by Jeb. I mean, you know, the guy's in. Bush is in because his brother runs Florida. It seems to me that, that Gore got more votes and lost. Well, he didn't get enough. The guy, man's an idiot. <laughs> All right? You're the, sitting, you're the sitting vice president. You are the next guy in line for the presidency of the most popular presidential regime in the last eight years, how could you not win? How stupid do you have to be <laughs> not to go out? He can read, he can write. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's dead from the neck down, but the man <laughs> has got a brain, right? Whereas you take Bush, I think they should graft Bush's body onto Gore's head. That would be President Bohr, is who it would be. <laughs> we got the technology for that nowadays. But yeah, I mean, I, I just think that the guy should have campaigned more. He should have, he could have, had he merely got the black vote, he would have won. But he didn't even bother. Well, this is interesting, because they managed to elect a president okay in Rwanda. Right. But you can't manage it in America. Well, you're talking about Rwanda. That's a Scandinavian country. What the... <laughs> <laughs> Socialist up there. Uh, well, that's no, they a, do that, allow black people to vote there, though. I mean, there are many terms for president. I think Idi Amin was a president, but, you know. Yeah, he kind of took it upon himself yeah, to be yeah. one. Yeah, you've heard of him, then? You, oh, yeah. You learn about him in school, or...? No, I saw a movie with uh, Mel Gibson, I think. Okay. <laughs> Danny Glover and Mel Gibson. Yeah. Hey, you know. I, I, I'm very sorry that Bush is going to become president, but I think he probably earned it because, uh, by default, I and mean, believe me, I hate them both. To you me, do? Oh, I can't stand either one of them. It is a good job so that I, half the world's lawyers are in America because they've, you know, been able to sort it all out. Well, let's see, there's a whole thing. You want the president, supposedly the most powerful man in the country, possibly the world, when he goes running to the court saying, oh, I can't decide, I'm going to go ask the courts. Well, where's the credibility there, you know? They should get a puppy, put it in the middle of the room, both men call to it. Whichever <laughs> one comes to president. It's that simple. When you came to uh, live here, yeah. what struck you as the biggest difference? Americans think they'll live forever, and Brits pretty much know sooner or later they're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing, like when you read obituaries in Britain, you know, everybody dies peacefully or suddenly. Well, well how do they die in America? Spectacularly. <laughs> But I just, but I mean, it's just, I think that people will dwell on it here, you know, and, and, and every day, they, how they list three famous people, you know, every day in the Times, there'll be three famous dead people, every day, which is just eerie. <laughs> it can't always be three dead famous, it's not that big a country, right? <laughs> Either they're making up some of these people, <laughs> or they're bumping people off just to fill the paper. You've been in jail, I gather, in both countries, England and America. I mean, uh, just overnight, you know. Just yeah, yeah. Well, it's okay, I've been in jail too, not yeah, in, this, yeah, in yeah. France. And jail, Greece. not prison. I mean, don't get Yeah, in jail. Yeah. We, um, we have a slightly distorted view, I think, of American jails uh, due to the Jailhouse Rock song, you know. They oh, yeah. Sounds, sounds okay, really, in one of your prisons. <laughs> well, that song really doesn't hold up, does it? The, well, from the very beginning, the very beginning line, the warden threw a party at the county jail. <laughs> First of all, no, he didn't. <laughs> well, it was different in Elvis's time, but, uh, you know. But I think my favorite lyric is, number 37 said to number three, you're the cutest jailbird I ever did see. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if a guy in prison comes up to you and says, you're the cutest jailbird I ever did see, <laughs> you're screwed. <laughs> Not to mention number three, that's the third oldest prisoner in the prison. <laughs> Of weird geriatric homosexual <laughs> number three man's gonna turn to dust he's gonna break a hip you know <laughs> number four thousand six hundred and one some young punk leave number three alone give him his dignity do you think yeah. there's a difference between the british and the american sense of humor uh, i think the british uh, sense of humor is uh, drier I only say that because that's what everybody else says. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> People always say, oh, the Brits, they have a dry sense of humor. You go to America and you say, when I, when I, because, you know, I've done a lot of comedy in America, and when I go back home and they, and they say, oh, I hear you've been working in England. Oh, they've got a really dry sense of humor over there, don't they? Well, they like Benny Hill and Monty Python, that kind of stuff. 
There's a little gray area in between Monty Python and Benny Hill. Yes. Failed to acknowledge. You could drive a Buick through it, I yeah. think. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Rich Hall.